face out of their way, can't we? Yeah, right. All right. Cool. All right. One more time for a group, bro, and everybody. Uh, I know it's a it's a little bit of an adjustment because stand up is a one person game. So just to get used to this is a little. Well, weird, no, so. that's because well, they they're gonna have to widen the stage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. Of course. Thank man. you for doing it and having a good time. I think they had a great time I, too. I yes. Felt like they had a good All time. Right. Uh, I'd like to start by apologizing. <laughs> oh, man, it's not your fault. I'm fucking 57, and I felt like I was 19. I was having a really good time. It yeah, I, I invited him to play tennis, and I forgot how old and brittle he was. <laughs> <laughs> I got hyped, guys. I, I fucking hit a couple aces on him. Bra, bra. Oh, I, I was like, Right, I that's what it. happened. I, I started beating him, and then he got competitive. <laughs> then he found his game, and then he was chasing a ball. I was like, oh, I'm not young anymore. No, no. Much, yeah, much. and I was I got really worried. I'm like, am I gonna have to pay for your hospital bills? Fuck, no, I don't have that kind of money. No, not at all. Sag will pay for it. Ah, nice. <laughs> it's good to be sad. <laughs> it's good to be in that. Good. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made it. I glad was worried you wouldn't be able to make the shot. Nah, man. Even so if did. I couldn't walk, I would have came up here with a boot. Yeah, you yeah. would have done that for me. Absolutely, because these what is this like seven people in here? <laughs> <laughs> this shit is special. <laughs> these are only seven people who witnessed this shit. That's and right. And that camera is filming it. Yeah. So like five years from now, when this shit is like, oh my god, they're gonna be like, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> That's great, man. Uh, well, where do we start? Well, first of all, let's start with you. You were born and raised in the Bronx. Yes, I was born in the South Bronx. I grew up on the uh, Upper West Side. Oh, okay. Yeah. And when I was like doing a little bit of research about you, one of the first things I saw was that you were bar mitzvahed at 13 years old. I had a bar mitzvah, yeah. My stepfather's Jewish and my mother was black. Yeah, there's a couple of Jews um, in the back. They want to represent. <laughs> <laughs> I said my mother was black. I'm sorry. <laughs> she's, she's still black. Uh, <laughs> what is she now? <laughs> well, Rachel Dolez, I was white uh, at one point. Uh, so yeah, so, yeah, I was raised in an interracial household. So when yeah. I was 13, I had a... What, what happens at a bar mitzvah? Is it just a party? Uh, this one in particular was just a mock one. Like we, I mean, I didn't have a bunch of dudes and there was no theme just me and my stepfather he's like you're a man now and i was like what <laughs> that's it yes man and he had this fucking organ in the house and he started playing this shit which shocked the fuck out of me because i didn't know he could do that shit <laughs> this dude played basketball he had long hair and shit and they used to call him and my mother uh uh jesus and aunt jemima and my mother <laughs> hated that shit and my stepfather would have to stop my mother from fucking punching people in the face when we were kids. And I'm like seven. Well, I'm first like, of all, who came up on? with that? That's pretty fucking hilarious. Fucking my stepfather used to play basketball in fucking Central Park with all black dudes, yo. Yeah. And it was like the late, uh, like early 70s, man. Like, Where you, you know. could make racial jokes without fear And it was just like, oh, look, at, look at Jesus yeah. and Aunt Jemima. Do, do, do. <laughs> uh, in your face, white boy. Like... <laughs> Jesus and Aunt Jemima. Yeah, that's man. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get a bunch of money? Because I think that's a part of a bar mitzvah, no? Yeah, it was, I, I said it was a mock one. He gave me like $20 and was like, don't spend it all in one spot. <laughs> Something to that effect. Damn, like, just, don't spend it all in one place. Just 20? All right, let's do some comparison. Uh, Jewish girl in the back. How much money did you get for well, your bar mitzvah? No, she had a bat mitzvah. That's, that's, What's right? the difference? Uh, Is there gender? Bar and bat? Yeah, one, right? Am I wrong on that? Okay. Oh. oh, all right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. How many days are getting bat mitzvah? I don't fucking know. Well, I got you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best ever. Very people. inclusive crowd. I love yes, it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how much money did you get? Sure, Ember Heard, go ahead. Yeah, let's preface that. <laughs> let's say you gave it all to UCLA. Jesus Christ. <laughs> if he was a lot, don't be ashamed of your money. It's fine. So, I think, I mean, uh, in the invitation, I said I was going to do that, so people gave me a lot more. So, I ended up getting like 20 bucks Let's get to the number, baby. How much money? All right. 
<laughs> she felt really guilty about that. One. <laughs> I always right. wanted to do that, by the way. Not donate money. I mean, go and work on the uh, on the farm. I always wanted to do that, like a summer yeah. of just like fucking, you know. So you got twenty dollars, huh? Yeah, and I, I was yeah. spent all that shit on candy. <laughs> <laughs> shared it with my friends. They were like, Grizz the best. Ain't he funny too? He got candy? That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, all those words had a little pedo in it, but <laughs> <laughs> he's funny and he has candy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can't get away from a pedophile if he has the smart jokes. <laughs> anyway, so this happens. Now you are, you are young men now. You are young black slash Jewish men in, in, in Harlem. Uh, no, we were in Manhattan on the Upper West Upper Side. Upper West Side. Yeah. So now you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your life. Mm. And because you say on stage, you did not always want to be a comic. Is that true or that's no, partly I mean, a joke? <clears throat> it's part joke. It's part truth. Most of the shit we as comedians get up here and say, there are some of the stuff that's just outlandish. You can rest assured there's no truth to it. It's something that happened. So there's a small amount of truth to it so that being said um <clears throat> yeah like i wanted to play baseball right i wanted to be an astronaut i wanted to be a fucking what but I, you you went for a tryout for uh, the san francisco giants no, right uh I, I got invited to camp and i didn't go and there's a whole fucking bio out there that's wrong that said that i got an injury <laughs> and that's why i wasn't able to pursue my career and it's like no i just didn't have the money to go to camp like to go the dude gave me I if they invite you you have to pay out of pocket <clears throat> to go well to camp? i didn't have the i didn't have the money to go and pay for a plane ticket to go to arizona what happened to jesus he wouldn't help with that <laughs> <laughs> nah it just it wasn't in the cards oh okay but so that was always funny though there you go so you yeah. already had a plan b in your pocket uh, I didn't know if it was going to be plan B or not. I know there was a point where my mother was like, you got to get your black ass a job or you got to get out. <laughs> and you need to join yeah. the army. Your uncle, uh, your cousin Ty joined the army and look at him. And it's like, fuck, he is doing well. <laughs> <laughs> I went down to a recruiting office uh -huh. and got all the way out to JFK. And this is when cell phones first came out. So they were kind of bulky and shit and gray. And I called my boys, and I was like, yo, I'm about to join the army, man. And they was like, yo, get the fuck out of here. Yo, this nigga great acting wild. Yo, Ran, here, man. And he passed it to my dude, Ran. And Ran knows my voice when I'm serious. And I'm like, yo, dude, I'm about to join the army, man. And he was like, are you, are you, are you, are you out of your fucking mind? Like, whoa, whoa. Hung up. Uh, there was this dude I had laughing, because they had us in there by the fucking hundreds. And they were taking in a hundred at a time, swearing them in, putting them in buses, on planes, out. That's how they were doing it. And there was this one dude I was talking to, and I, and I had him laughing. And I, he, he was like, yo, my man, like, uh, what are you going to do when you get in? And I was like, I don't know. I don't even want to do this shit. And he was like, dude, then don't, man. Don't. Don't do this. Don't. Don't do it. If you do this, this shit's going to end up bad for you. Yeah. And there was a door. Right there, and he's like, yo, go ahead, man. Go, go, get out of here. Don't do this if you don't want. And I left. And once I got outside that door and figured out my way around the innards of the fucking airport to get back up where people were, uh, <laughs> I heard, like, Greer Barnes come to the front desk. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to this area, which was the front desk, and it was, like, fucking 12 of my dudes who were all taller and bigger and blacker than me standing there like, yo, this nigga crazy, yo. Like, <laughs> Let's go, man. <laughs> How old were you then? I was about 20. Okay. 20, so, no, no, more, no. I think I was about 21, maybe. 20, yeah, about 20. Yeah, 21, 20 to 21 years old. Okay. So yeah. that happened. So your next move is to maybe get on stage. Is that what you're thinking about at that time? I remember my boys telling me, you have to do stand-up. Here's the fucked up part. When we left the, uh, the airport, when they picked me up, it was like 12 of my dudes, three cars, we were all in the cars, smoking marijuana, speeding home, passing bottles of beer on the highway to each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we were... So I, we, I, I don't know. I just thought that was fucking... You were nuts. basically a Jay-Z song, you like, know? I, <laughs> 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 I 
Yeah, so, um, and then I, 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 uh, I went and did an open mic. and uh, Where? Where did, do you remember where you did it? The comic strip. Upper East Side. Yeah. All right. Uh, what was, year was that? Um, I think 82. Damn. So 82, <laughs> comic strip, open mic. How, how did it go? Most people's first time <laughs> don't go well. It didn't go well at all. And it was but well enough that you felt like you should go back and do no, it. No, it was more like, I have to. Uh, wait a minute. I, I have to do this. I know there's something in there. I know I can. Yeah. I know I can. I got a couple giggles. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it didn't, didn't go well. Right. Because yeah. the, the first few times, you're just trying to figure out how to stand in front of people and mm -hmm. talk. Because mm -hmm. that's so unnatural. To most people. Sure, but at the time, I was, Eddie Murphy was huge, so everything I did was like Eddie Murphy, my hand movements, the way I spoke and shit. I mean, I ain't exactly go, <laughs> I ain't do that, but I was everything else was like, get the fuck out of here. Like, was, <coughs> Speaking really fast. Yeah, just like that yeah. Old stuff. Yeah. And I remember one summer, uh, it was for the dudes who saved me from the army. <laughs> <laughs> This was like maybe 83, 84. Yeah. We were walking down Columbus Avenue. It was summer. And there were these two white guys on the sidewalk with a mouse amp and mics. And, and they had like 70 people standing there looking at, like, you know, laughing. And uh, we walked up and he said something to us. And the crowd laughed. And I said something. And the crowd laughed. And it just went back and forth for a second. And he said something to his friend. And he was like, yeah. And he went and he pulled me in there. And he gave me the mic. And the both of them, and all I had at the time was, hey, what's going on, y'all? Uh, you <laughs> <laughs> right, just stalling, figuring out how to, how to it be was funny. funny. It was scary at the time, but I wanted to do it. Right. Okay, so how long between the first open mic and sort of figuring out, oh, maybe I'm pretty good at this? How long did it take you to feel like, okay, I'm figuring it out? I don't, I don't. Because you seem kind of natural. Well, I'll tell you, man. I remember I was laying on my mom's couch one night and I was just, I was crying. Because I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm going to do stand up. I have to. I have to do this. Like, I'm not going to play baseball. You know, I, you know, that's what I. Phew. I wanted to play baseball because I wanted to pitch because I wanted to be the one that everybody was looking at. Same mm -hmm. like stand up. Yeah. 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 Similar dream. Yeah. 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 I didn't mean to bring you down. <laughs> <laughs> no, your dreams are uplifting. <laughs> it didn't bring them down. It's fine. Yeah. You know, you had <laughs> no, you wanted to be in the limelight. Down. You wanted to be seen. Like, yeah, like I wanted to be the dude, yo. If I was if anybody was gonna get fucking twenty strikeouts in the game, it was Greer Barnes. Like, yeah, yeah. That's what I you know. Well now you you're killing on stage, which is different, but it's kind of a similar feeling, isn't uh, it? Uh I mean, yeah, I've I've done arenas. <laughs> yeah, you've yeah. done Madison Square Garden. Yeah. yeah. That's can't does it get any better than that as a fucking New Yorker? As an athlete aspirer like Madison Square Garden? It was great. You man. did what a lot of Knicks players don't even get to do. That's fucking amazing. Come on, man. I was gonna wear my Knicks shirt tonight too. <laughs> They're just warming up the bench. You're on stage at Madison Square Garden making oh, 20,000 people laugh. It, it was it was fucking it was amazing. Cool. It was amazing. Yeah. I opened for Louis C.K. Twice. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, at the garden. Yeah, yeah I saw you one time. Yeah, 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 it was cool. It was amazing. I had a ball. It was fun. I'm, I remember when I got the call, I was in the cab, and I I get nervous about things. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God. I don't need, can I do this? <laughs> I, oh, my God, can I do this? And one thing you got to remember, though, when you're doing places that big is that you have to, when you do your jokes normally, it's like boom, 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 boom. You got to take a second. Yeah, because it travels like that, and then the last come. And it's like, oh shit, that's twenty thousand people. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> How long did did it take you to figure that out? Just the first time you did um, it, you were like, I, well, right. I was on the road with Chappelle for a while, so I figured that shit out on the road with Chappelle. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man, it was great. That's pretty amazing. Do you remember your first good bit? 
I used to have this joke, right? Uh, <laughs> The Eddie Murphy came back out again. That's what, that's what it was. That's all I had at the time was an impression of Eddie Murphy. I, I, you know, yeah, that's all I had. I, I saw this clip of you from I think uh, Dev Jam was it? Oh where you were God. doing impressions. Yeah, because you've always been good with voices. I used to do impressions, but then I saw Dave Attell go up on stage one night, and Dave Attell was just joke after joke after joke set up premise punchline just boom boom and i was like <sighs> nice like no more impressions maybe one or two here but yeah nah did you feel like they were sort of a <clears throat> cop out or lazy way to do it um impressions people love impressions they uh but you can't do 15 20 minutes of just impressions. Yeah, yeah, after a while, it's the you know it's monotonous. I mean, it's they could be still be funny, but when you get a person that comes up here, male, female, they, <laughs> <laughs> it's all of these you know different rhythms of of our voices, how we sound, our, our body movements, and you know but, you know just impression after impression after impression after impression. It's the exact same thing. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it makes sense. <laughs> I just didn't want to. I mean, I don't know how deep these people are into the world of comedy, but it makes sense to me. Does that uh, make sense to you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just didn't. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to uh, be known as a comic who does impressions. But I think you made a really good <clears throat> seamless transition from impressions to now you do bits, but you still use that the, yeah. talent for voice. Yeah, yeah. Like I that. Mean, that. That bit about the bees, I've mm. told you this before. That mm. bit, I've seen it a lot of times, and every single time that I see it, it makes me laugh because it's, it, you become an actor when you do that bit. Well, that's what the thing, <laughs> the thing about stand-up comic, which I think a lot of comedians have forgotten, is that um, ultimately we are actors. Yeah. You know? Um, Elaborate. Well, like, for instance, like, I... I I'm not going to really be at the bar. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, know, I, know how, I know how I look, you know what I mean? <laughs> if, if you saw me walking down the street and I said, you got some chain, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no so, dice self. So, yeah, so <laughs> I, I play it, you know, and I get looks like, ooh, and it's like, okay, but I'm not, you know, I'm not homeless. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, we're, we're actors. There's so many comedians as well that I see within this comedy selling realm where they don't, th their jokes can easily be three-dimensional by yeah. acting out. Yes. Give that a voice, you know? Bring that one out more. Yeah, the, you know. the B bit belongs in the Library of Congress <laughs> because it's one of those things. <laughs> That's so cool on so many levels, and the voices are done so perfectly. And every time you do it, you never miss a beat. So I think it's it's beautiful. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> and one other thing I like about you is because you've been doing it for what? How many years? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay. Here's because yeah. every time I come here and I'm working and I whatever, I'm always I see you watching the show and laughing at other people. Yeah, man. That's hard to do. Because a lot of comedians, they sort of lose that joy for comedy. Yeah. Because they've, yeah. they've seen how the, the meat, how yeah, the food how is the made in the kitchen. Made, right, yes, right. Yeah. Well, but you're still very interested in the sausage. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Pause. <laughs> you still because we have to keep the sausage going. That's okay? right. <laughs> That's right. Um, no, nah, like when I see comedians, like they should know, like. Yeah, man. Fuck yeah. That's. I want you to know that that is fucking funny. You know, we hear laughter from you guys, and some of them are at different pitches, and we feel that shit. And we hear it, and it's like, okay, it may it'll inspire us to do that joke more. Like it may be something with that joke that we're kind of like, ah. mm -hmm. but when you hear people laugh, and it's just like, all right then there'll be a pitch that you hear on someone in particular, and you'll hear that, and it'll be like, okay, I really have to go in on this joke. Yeah. Like, I have to 
bring the meat and potatoes out of it. Right, because the crowd sort of tells you how it, how it should be done. And then it's the hardest thing in the world. I don't know you guys. What the... Right, But at the right. same time, it's like, we're going to go inside this dark bar. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys are going to get up on stage and evoke an emotion of laughter. Right. Isn't that the beauty of it as, a, like as it. a job? Because uh, yeah. you, the job is basically turning a room of strangers into your friends. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. not a lot of other professions yeah. that can do that. And sometimes people will, you know, they'll have a funny guy at the office. And they'll be like, you should do stand up. It's like, <laughs> no, it's not the same at all. <laughs> well, when I, I did work in an office. And, uh, <laughs> you were the funny guy at the office? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you well, should do stand up. Well, you were one of the few that made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah that's fucking cool. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I told you this before, but one, a couple months ago, one night, I think I did a set. I don't know if it was this room or downstairs. And you told me that I was funny, and it it almost made me cry. <laughs> because one of like, in, I remember in two thousand nine uh. when I was thinking about doing stand up, and I went to Gotham, and it was my first comedy show in New York City. Mm. And I took this girl with me, and William Stevenson was the host. Mm. You remember? That's my R.I.P. Uh, and you were one of the comics there, and I saw you, and I was like, holy shit, this guy is amazing. So just the full circle woman of you telling me that I'm funny, it was kind and of emotional. And now we are. Yeah. And now I almost broke your leg. So, <laughs> 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 so that was just nice. That was very nice. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I, 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 um, I encourage young comics when I see them. This yeah. shit is hard, man. It's not... Yeah. Everybody's not going to be like a Dave Chappelle or a Rock or a Kevin Hart or, or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, fuck out this lady. <laughs> but that being said, if you are a good comedian, you can make a living doing stand-up. You can. Um, one of the things that they've been trying to do, which will never happen, is get like a, a union together mm -hmm. for comedians. So that's why that whole thing back to when you're on stage, I think a lot of us have lost the idea of the fact that we're actual actors. Yeah. You know? Why do you think the union will never happen? Uh, because we're, we're comedians, man. <laughs> like, Not enough discipline. You couldn't even like, get me here last week. <laughs> <laughs> we just like, everybody's in it. Like comedians, I don't want to say we're nuts, but we're... You know, I already got my thing that I have to want to do or that I want to go towards. Like, you know, these comedians, yeah. like, they have their idea. But right. We're, we're, we're loners. We play by ourselves. It's hard yeah, to get us to do Yeah, we're all on the same stuff. team, but we're soloists. It's, it's the yeah, weirdest. It is, it is a weird contradiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember the first time you got paid? Um, it was in a strip club. <laughs> In the Bronx. You did stand up at a strip club in the Bronx? <laughs> when <laughs> when Def Jam came out, yeah. uh, it showed the world black stand up comedy. All of a sudden, all over the country, there were these, a bar like this, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they were just popping up, boom, and there was a, a strip club I did. And, um, they, I made him laugh. <laughs> and one of the ladies' breasts jiggled. <laughs> <laughs> Strippers and patrons. They were all part oh, of dude, the Oh, dude, the dudes, when they were there, it was like, yo, after the jokes, it's more titties. <laughs> like, it <was> like <laughs> and it was the weirdest fucking atmosphere because they literally, when it was time for the fucking stand-up comedy show to happen, they were like, whoop, we here, yo. It was good. Like, they were an audience, and it was just like, holy shit, and we fucking... I remember I got on the pole and did some shit with <laughs> fuck people up. <laughs> no, you did not yes, get yes. on a pole. Yes! I mean, I ain't do none of that crazy shit. <laughs> but I remember I, I ran and I grabbed it and I swung around. Dude, come on, man. You know how we used to climb and shit. I was like, ooh, ooh. Uh, <laughs> swung around. And, yeah. <laughs> You should have gotten paid twice, you know, as a comedian and a stripper. Come on. <laughs> you did double duty. That's amazing. 
That's, that's a great way to get paid for the first time. Mine wasn't that interesting. I just went somewhere in Westchester and they gave me $80 for 10 minutes. And I was like, oh, that's actually good money if mm. you think about it. Mm. And I was like, I got to keep doing this shit. That's fun. the other thing, man. You know, the amount of money you could make for this small amount of time. Um, yeah. So what yeah. was, you got into the comic strip and... Well, my first audition was, uh, first of all, the comic strip, when you had to, when you were about to perform, I think it was every Monday, they would put like 10 numbers in a hat with 100 pieces of paper and you'd have to wait online. It used to be, that was awesome. Just waiting online, you'd see all of these people online trying to get a number so that they can get on that following Monday. Yeah, yeah. And, uh... Was yeah. it what's his name? Jr. Was it the guy? Uh, no. Um, fuck, what was his before name? Before him, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Before. Because I think that's my time. Yeah. 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 Um, Lucian. That's who ah. I'm, okay. Yeah. Cool. And uh, I remember when did I, you get here? To the, at the cellar. Yeah. God, I think I've been working here for about twenty years. I don't. Oh God, no. I got here in mid nineties, maybe. Okay. I didn't even know the cellar was there. I used to work at the Boston Comedy Club, which was down the block. And I had to do it. I've heard of Boston. Yeah, yeah, it's not. When did it disappear? About 12 years okay. ago. 15 maybe You know what's, what's interesting about this that? place? 15? What? What, 20 years? So, Liz, how long have I been working here? 30 years? Jesus. Fuck. <laughs> I have no concept of time. That's why I look the way I look, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I am <laughs> Yeah, and I, I, I had an audition for ABC, and we had to do seven minutes at the, uh, the Mothership Club, and yeah. I destroyed. Fuck yeah. Crushed it. And SD was like, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm from... He's here. only funny to us. She's a little old lady with a deep accent, you guys. You would, you would get it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you live here in New York? I'm going to give you spots. This is when you had to do... You had to do 20 minutes, right? At the time, or what was it, 15 to 20 minutes? At the right, but you had to do like 20... I, I remember I said to Esty, I was like, Esty, she was like, I'm going to give you spots. And I was like, all right. I was like, I only have seven minutes. And she was like, ah, you will handle it. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, threw me in yeah. there, y'all. <laughs> you know what's funny about that? You working here, but you started at the Strip. Esty was telling me a couple, couple months ago, I was talking to her about just the history of the place. She mm. told me this place started in 81, 82. And at the time... She was bribing comedians from the comic strip to come <laughs> down here because the, the village was thought of as a dirty place. Nobody yes. wanted to be here. <laughs> Upper East Side, that's where Dude, everything was at. I remember. She'd be like, I'll pay for your cap fare. Come down here and do my The comedy club. cellar was half this crowd every night. <laughs> but here's the kicker. They paid us, they fed us, and they drank us. Right. Like, we... And that's the key. You treat, if you treat comedians right, they'll and keep coming. Eventually, the shit it was like people were like, "It's gonna light." <laughs> <laughs> we got three clubs. I want to Vegas. <laughs> wow. Yeah, man. Twenty minutes. When you had seven, how'd and you that, stretch? I, oh God. I told my jokes real, real slow. <laughs> <laughs> that is a tough thing when you. Dude, I honestly don't know how I survived it. Like, I, I don't remember. Like, Instinct, you know? You wanted to do it, you figure out a way to do it. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was tough. And then being in a room as big as the cellar is, like this, and it's like literally seven people. Yeah. <laughs> And every once in a while, you'd be like, you would hear like, ha. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. <laughs> one. He'd be like, yes. I fucking did this. <clears throat> yo, you heard Greer last night, yo? But see, that's probably why you're this good, because that's something I learned like doing it, where if you can perform to the fullest extent for like seven people, mm. then when it's 300, it, it'll be nothing. Because you already and there, worked your brain. I'll, I'll to do also it. admit, there were times down at the comedy cellar where it may have been seven to 14 people, 
and it seemed like it was 1,400 people. So right. it was this weird right. thing that would happen, you know, <clears throat> and they would, it would just be one continuous show. So you would get new people, and then you would have some of the same people that were there for the first show. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, and uh, you could see faces now. Oh God! Can you I, I, do the same jokes? Yeah, you have to because you got like it's a story, man. You uh, you grasp the people's attention, and then you lead them. You know? Right, right. So, but as far as yeah, you'd have to tell those jokes. But then it's like those people back there didn't hear it, you know. Yeah, man, it would get the same response. It's like, huh. <laughs> So while you're doing this, mm. do you have time to build something off stage? Do you have, you know, you are you trying to get married? You're trying to have kids. <laughs> Liz, stop it, Liz. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Liz and I got married. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I married, uh, well, whatever. Oh, uh, is that a sore spot? I can No, it's her. not a sore spot at all. Uh, the, she was an Israeli woman, wonderful lady. And she was like, yeah, I, she was gorgeous. I used to always flirt with her and be funny with her. Israeli women are very beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And I said to her one night, I was like, you want to get married? And because I was drinking, I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> but the way she said yes, she wasn't. And I was like, hold on, hold that was your first, like, actual... I'm like, I'd known her for a few years, and I would always, like... But know, have you guys had, like... No. Have you no, hooked up with no, her? No. No. And then you just no. asked her if she wanted to get married. Yeah, and she was like, yeah. <laughs> and by the way she said it, I was like, wow, like, she's serious. <laughs> and I was like, all right, fuck it, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yo, let's go, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> we went to Vegas. I had on a suit. She had on this badass dress, yo. We was walking through the casino and motherfuckers was clapping. I was like, oh, they must know I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So you got married to the Israeli lady. What mm -hmm. was her name? Anat. Anat. Mm. Did you have kids with her? No. 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 Do you have kids at all? I have about 175 children. <laughs> <laughs> And 175 different countries. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding! <laughs> yeah, I have three boys and two girls. Holy shit, you're not fucking around. Have you no. heard of uh, condoms or pulling out? Have you heard of... Yeah, yeah, of those? yeah they, they break. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, guys. <laughs> you guys are nasty. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do break. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And the weirdest thing is when you're not experienced enough, when a condom breaks, you don't know. No. You because don't. you just start to feel better and you're like, why is this feeling better all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> and then you just, in the safety of your condom, you just come and then you realize, oh, fuck. I, I got a, somebody a ring on me now. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. How old are your kids? Uh, uh, 28. Um, 28. 14, 10, uh, 9. Damn, you're like, and you're four, straight yeah, up TV I dad. Does. That's amazing. Whatever. <laughs> it's like when you, when you come home from a hard day, work on stage. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I really don't. That's great. So you here, you live in this life, mm. and amazing things. Who, who is probably the... Obviously, Eddie Murphy was one of your heroes. Mm. Did you get to meet any of your heroes in this business? Mm, no, I met Charlie Murphy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. and that's I was cool. like, that was. I was like, wow, this is. I shook his hand, and I was like, I know Eddie has shook this hand before. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie's probably done way more with that but hand his, than his shaking. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember Dave Chappelle telling me that. Uh, he, uh, he was like, um, he was at Eddie's house or something. And I was like, damn, I always wanted to meet him, dude. And Eddie was like, he knows who you are. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, Eddie Murphy knows who you are. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Comics know when somebody's good, they know. They just hear it in the streets. That's why he ain't doing stand-up, because he know I'm out here. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Don't erase that. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is thing. I'm not editing it out. I'm going to find a way to get it to Eddie Murphy. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) You see how I transformed into... I know a... I actually know a dude who speaks like this. You know what I mean? So that... It's an impression of that. Yeah. He was one of the dudes who came to get me at the airport. (laughs) It's like you have a memory bank of different characters you meet, and then you pull one out whenever you need to. Characters I... uh, I meet, I grew up with, stuff I see on, on screen, on television, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you didn't meet Eddie. Who else? Because there's got to be a lot of heroes in the world of comedy. You uh, nah, man, nah. No? No. Nah. T- well, shit, if I have to tell you, it's like Eddie Murphy is my thing. Dave Attell uh-huh. is like fucking... Yeah. Like, uh, uh, Chris Rock, nothing? Chris Rock, yeah, man. Chris Rock, yeah. of course, yo. Uh, but as far as like what I would consider to be a part of my foundation as a stand-up comic, it would be Pryor, Murphy, and, and, and Attell. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, if, if I'm watching you, I'm like, yes, that makes perfect sense. Because it's, it's building a world on stage. Because mm. Pryor was kind of like that. When you're watching him, you're like, oh, this is a movie. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, not, not all of us are talented enough to do that, so <laughs> stop bragging about it, all right? <laughs> okay, so career is going well, life is going well. You got your five children with how many women? Two. Oh, two? Okay, that's not too bad. I thought you were going to say five different women. Nah, dude, I'm, I'm not. I'm, oh, God. You, you do have a certain womanizing quality about you. Yeah, Grill, you look like you fuck, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> no? <sighs> I believe the fifth. <laughs> Not with this ankle. <laughs> you need your ankle for that, you know? <laughs> so, okay. Now we'll get into like the little cute questions. If you. If you could bring one, then don't say Eddie, don't say Richard Pryor. Obviously, would know that. If you could bring one artist back from the dead to have dinner with them, who would you pick? Huh? At this stage of the game and the way the world is right now, George Carlin. Ah, nice. I just watched the documentary. George Carlin, I did too, and yeah. I remember watching him as a kid as well. You know, but yeah. Yeah, I, I'd I'm love a, to hear what he'd have to say today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you and a lot of us. Yeah, <laughs> he's no, he was he was definitely brilliant. And just the the different phases mm. that he went through in his career. Just mm-hmm. every time he's like, I'm gonna reinvent myself to become something new, and did it every time, even though my audience may not like it. That's that's that takes balls. It does, but I mean, he was he. <laughs> He killed. What did he do? Like 20 HBO specials? Like 13. Th- uh, 13? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. fucking nuts, dude. That's a lot. Yeah. Like, he's, his fan base was always there, and he was always attracting a new base yeah. throughout his life. People got hip to him, you know? Yeah. <coughs> I, I discovered Colin in 2008. That's the year I moved here, and mm. that's also the year he died, mm. sadly. Yeah, Damn, man. You know, you know, okay, here's how I discovered John Colin. <laughs> I, I was in college, and, and I went to school in Long Island, mm. Adelphi University. And first year in college, trying to learn English as, you know, this Haitian kid. We don't speak English in Haiti. So I was like, I had a couple of English classes. I thought that was enough to sit in, in a college university class and learn, but it turned out it wasn't enough. So mm. I'm learning, and I'm watching a lot of TV. And one night, I was trying to impress this girl. I was trying to fuck as a new kid in America. And at the time, Cat Williams was really hot. Mm. So I asked this girl over. She came over, <clears throat> and I opened up my computer, and I played Cat Williams for her. And she was like, oh, this is very good, but I'm going to show you something a little different. And she put on George Carlin. Bingo. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't have the energy of a Cat Williams. I can't run up on stage with a fucking perm. I cannot do that. Neither can I. But I saw George Carlin, I was like, oh, I could, I could learn how to do that. 
And I forgot that I was trying to fuck that girl. I let I let her go. I was like, I'm just gonna watch George Carlin. Fuck your pussy. This is George time. Me and George were gonna have ourselves a night. I watch every single special of his. Yeah, he became one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, man, he was he was amazing. Super yeah, he intelligent. Really was. You yeah. know? Made people think as he made them laugh. That's why you know. Yeah, I, I think he died maybe a month after he recorded his final special. That's how much of a workaholic mm. he was. Yeah, he recorded it, I think, in 2008, maybe June or July. Mm. And then I think he died maybe a month later or something like that. Yeah, it was pretty cool. That he died? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure he wanted to die at some point. Nobody wants to live forever. Oh man. I've been thinking about my mortality lately. Yeah? Well, since yesterday when I popped my Achilles. <laughs> <laughs> since I almost killed you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. What have you been thinking about? That's a good topic. I don't know, man. Just, you know, like, what am I doing? Like, I, I, I'll tell you this. Once, uh, when you get up on stage and you make people laugh, you know, that's that immediate gratification. You yeah. Know? So, and then once that's over, you know, you go home and it's like, Okay, I have a voiceover audition tomorrow. I have a whatever other audition tomorrow. Don't get them. But mm -hmm. there's always stand-up. You know what I mean? Yes. And it's like, how long? Like, am I going to do it as long as Carlin? You know Why not? I, mean? I, I just never thought about it. Yeah. I always wanted to be an action hero in a movie. <laughs> not with that ankle. <laughs> <laughs> you did play in movies. Because you told me, well... I, didn't, I haven't seen the movie. I don't want to lie to you, but there's this movie for the love of the game about baseball yeah. where you got to play alongside Kevin Costner mm -hmm. and a couple of other big names. How was that as an experience? It was amazing. It was hilarious because uh, both of the teams were actual uh, AAA ball players, so mm -hmm. they were all real ball players. What, is that what AAA means? AAA is right below the majors. Oh, uh, okay. Like if you're in triple-A ball, you're You, you could good. go to the majors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they were, and they were all baseball players, and they were like, dude, did you play baseball? I was like, yeah, man. It was like, oh, we thought you was just an actor. So <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Surprise, I'm actually talented at this. And I rem it, was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you get paid John, well? Yeah. John C. Riley. Yes, that's the other name that was on it. Yeah. I, I've, I've never seen a person who had no concept of catching a ball <laughs> I, I, it was the weirdest thing to see and and we and first of all there's like 1500 people in the in the stands and they have all of these cardboard colored pieces to make it look like you know it's yeah, thirty thousand. Yeah. and we on the side of the you know in the dugouts because they were shooting the scene and he just kept, couldn't catch the ball and we were just laughing and then the entire <laughs> Stadium started laughing because he couldn't catch the ball. And they came out over the loudspeaker and they were like, um, we appreciate you all being here. Will you refrain from laughing? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, catch the ball, motherfucker. And he finally caught it and everybody in the fucking was like, yeah. And they John were like, yeah, right. that's the sound we want for this particular part of the film. That's great. We got that sound? Oh. Yeah. So it worked out. <laughs> Was that uh, everything you thought being in a movie would be in terms of... Because that was your first one. Yeah, yeah. Like, because I think acting can be weird for comedians when you, when you haven't done it yet because this is very... You live or you die. You get to do it yes. once. Yeah. But when you're acting, you, sometimes you got to do 14 takes for the same scene. So you got to uh, find and that's different why ways to repeat the same words, different faces. And, and that's why movies are so amazing. Yeah. Because they give you that every picture, every shot is perfect. This is what we want. Boom, 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 boom. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you, would you like to do another movie? Absolutely. What would you like to be in a movie? I don't know. I think about that often. Like I have fantasies, yeah, about maybe doing like, <laughs> like Luther in New York, right? Okay. Only thing is like, is, you know, I'm black. I mean, he's black too. But <laughs> <laughs> you talking about? He's black gonna, and I'm British. Gonna, you I'm can totally do it. You're Luther right now. <laughs> no, but like, no, I would. It would be new, uh, 
A New York American, version of yeah, it. Yeah, an American version of it. No, you should go to the UK and do it because Idris Elba did the same shit to us. Yeah, it would be perfect revenge, you know. Hello, Just go to American Luther. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to take your jobs. <laughs> I could see you in a superhero movie. Yeah, man, I want to play uh, Blue Marvel. I don't know this hero. Yeah. Who's Blue Marvel? Blue Marvel. Look him up. Blue Marvel. Um, he's. Whew, how do I explain him, dude? Super intelligent dude. Uh, he came, was out. Came out in like the '60s. He actually came out like in 1998. But uh -huh. they're trying to. The, the, the story they built was that he came out during like the Vietnam War. He was this uh, physicist who him and this dude would doing something where they were splicing some sort of whatever right. genes and something blew up and the, both of them got mm -hmm. powers and some dude from another planet came here and uh, he fought him. He had this gold mask on. Uh, he fought this dude and he beat him. <clears throat> but then the crowd found out that he was black and they were like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> the American government. He was talking to John, John F. Kennedy, and he was like, "Yo, this is all in a nutshell. Yo, Blue Marvel, uh, you have to disappear. Okay, uh, white folks aren't going to be too cool with knowing that there's a man, a black man, with this much power out yeah. there." So he was like, "All right, cool. You know." And he slept. He just disappeared. And really? Yeah. Was was that before or after Black Panther? Because that's also in the sixties, no? Yeah, but like he came uh he his story comes from uh this guy, what's his name? Uh Gravo? Uh God, I can't think of the author's name. The guy who created him, but uh he also wrote um uh oh God. Jesus. Don't smoke weed. Another Jesus. comic book? <laughs> comic book? No, um those fucking giant fucking killer uh werewolf films and shit. Remember those? Was Somebody he? said Twilight. No, no it's definitely no. not. That's <laughs> no. not what he's talking about. No, That's a one, Mormon girl <laughs> who wrote her fantasy the one with the of teenage love. girl is fucking shooting and flipping and jumping and running around. Captain Marvel? No, I forgot. Anyway, all right, did, just look up Blue Marvel. Uh, yeah, you, you'll figure out. I did that. Was, that was really horrible. You know, speaking of <clears throat> Black Panther, whenever <clears throat> I hear you do the the B bit, mm. It sounds a little bit like that. You could play an uncle in Black Panther. I would look at it. I got the gray hair for it. Yeah, you could be like some shaman just giving wisdom to the <laughs> young. <laughs> I could totally see it. Hey, you don't want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Fall into a pit. I told you you didn't want to go there. Yeah. But you went I have a... <laughs> I have to let you go soon. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, well, we got to let them go soon. Right. Taking up all their time. Since you, you brought up mortality, I yes. always think a, a good way to end the show is to ask this. It's not a morbid question, because I always have to say that, because people think of it as morbid. But mm. what would you like a Greer Barnes tombstone to say? <laughs> oh, God. Um, I don't know. Uh, what would you want your legacy to be? He was fucking hilarious. <laughs> he, oh, no, I would love it to say he cured fucking cancer. <laughs> like, I would love to be able to be like, what? Boom. Fuck that industry, yo. <laughs> <laughs> cancer, gone. Fuck All that industry, yo. That's, that's it. Yeah. All right. I'd like to fucking find a cure. I'd actually like to be able to touch people and heal them. He was able to touch and heal. There you go. Bingo. <laughs> Which is a metaphorical way to say it was a bit of way people laugh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the, the great uh, Greer Bard, everybody. Brother. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, we're good, we're good.